News with Gina Gina. The news with Gina Grad. Well, there's a lot of news to get through, but I did notice something about the opening of the song that we played from Steve, The Door, right? It was called, it's called The Door. The Door. And I loved the, the intro so much with the drums. And I thought, mm-hmm. God, what does that sound like to me? And it sounded so much like 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover. Mm-hmm. Any thoughts about that? I can tell you uh, that there's a very good reason for that. Really? Because we had that song <laughs> and we were messing around with it and we were just trying to think of the, we were just trying to find the feel. And I was going to the studio the day that I knew we were going to track it, and we had a couple different ideas. And I put on the radio, and I heard that song, and I thought, well, what if Steve Gadd had one less arm to play with? I'm going to take some it, – it was totally the inspiration. It's a very simplified – it's not the same. It's great. If you do A and B with them, you'll go, oh, this is a very different pattern. But the whole point was to just find that same vibe. It felt like yeah. it. It felt well, then good. I, then so. I've done my job. Yeah. It's a great uh, song. Because, you know, the best drum parts are always a ripoff of Steve Gadd. Anyway, so, you know. I, 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 I steal quite happily from every drummer I love at all times. That's what you're supposed to he do. He was with uh, Paul Simon? With everybody. But oh, yeah, with everybody. That's, that was, yeah, he's played with Steely Dan albums and, I mean, all kinds of stuff. Love Steely Dan. Such a satisfying answer. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that. Yeah, I've never had a problem saying, like, oh, I take stuff from every drummer I ever see. <laughs> that That's you respect. You yeah. Well, I, uh, I hate to kick off with this story, but it is everywhere, and people are tweeting it to us like crazy. A man is facing federal charges after he walked to Wisconsin to have sex with a teenage girl, according to NBC News. Now, he didn't. I'll give you a little spoiler. But Justice, uh, the Justice Department said 32-year-old Tommy Lee Jenkins, and we do have a picture, had begun exchanging instant messages with a girl who he believed was a 14-year-old girl named Kylie. Jenkins allegedly demanded the girl send sexually explicit photos. <laughs> demanded. Demanded. Made plans to engage in sex with her. There he is. Oh, uh, stop it. When look, she turned down... A picture of him, yeah. <laughs> Halloween it's, costumes. It looks, it looks like Robert <laughs> Smigel bit into a pepper. David Cross looks <laughs> terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough picture. Uh, she turned him down, so he just started walking. Um, investigators say he decided to go and just just began the 351-mile hike to Nina, Wisconsin. Police said Jenkins continued to send explicit messages to, quote-unquote, Kylie. When he arrived in Winnebago County, Wisconsin, he was arrested by sheriff's deputies and an FBI special agent. There's uh, this whole communication thing we're kind of alluding to. It. Yeah, you go on the road for two years, you come back, haven't talked to anybody, mm-hmm. have no idea what's going on. Maybe a little too much communication now. Yeah. It's a little too mm-hmm. easily had. Scale can tip. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Well, and I think, and I've brought this up before because it's my favorite name for a business ever, the one from To Catch a Predator that, you know, supported the show that did right. all the work, Perverted Justice. Yeah, I like that. I keep thinking of a blues song called Walk into Wisconsin. Doodly, doodly, doodly. <laughs> <laughs> what rhymes with statutory? Right? <laughs> I may have to get in shape. There's statutory rape because I'm walking to Wisconsin. Oh. <laughs> I like when you, I like old songs about walking where they explain the other forms of transportation <laughs> yeah, they were. Yeah. I ain't oh, going to take a train. <laughs> I ain't going to take, take a, a plane because I'm walking to Wisconsin. Well, Wisconsin. they know you're going to ask, so they're answering ahead of time. Like, I know this is crazy. I got get a, out in front of this. I got a big bald spot and weird hair. She'll be of age when I get there because I'm walking to Wisconsin. <laughs> I got the Jordan Airs behind me. I thought Wisconsin was a lot farther away. I, I couldn't believe I got there in three days. That would be my 14. argument would be I figured she'd have a few birthdays. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And who knows? Maybe they've changed some laws. Yeah, by You know then. what I mean? Some consent laws yeah. by the time you got there. So that's what I was counting on. Mm-hmm. Well, this story is, oh, wow. Well. A little comparison for you. Well, they have the same optometrist, Robert Smigel. Yeah. And oh, my God. Crazy man. It's yeah, fantastic. So. Yeah. This, uh, this video also went viral in the last day or two, and it is sad and funny and sweet and weird. A video has recently gone viral that features footage from a funeral of an Irish man. A family and friends, they got together, uh, you know, they were all at the, the funeral, lowering the casket into the ground. And suddenly a voice comes out of nowhere, proclaims and, and freaks everyone out. And then they just sort of erupt in giggles. Now, the deceased man's wife, his name is Shay Bradley, and 
Alan Bradley responded by saying that the actual recording was done in one take a year before the funeral. The video was originally shared by his daughter, um, and she uploaded it finally to Facebook with a message that said, my dad's dying wish, always a prankster. Here's a clip from the actual funeral, being the casket being lowered into the ground. Hello? 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 Oh, it's great. Let me out! Where the fuck am I? Hello? Hello? Let me out the fucking bag in here! Who the fuck am I? Is that that priest I can hear? That fuck! Let me out! Hello? Hello? Stop the mask! Stop all the hearing! Wow. It goes on for another 30 seconds. Wow. He sings. This is shaming. I'm in the box. (laughs) No, I'm fucking front of you. I'm dead. You gotta hear that. That's me. Hello again. Hello. I just called to say goodbye. I'm gonna die. I pray to say hello again. Hello. Did she like bury yeah, where yeah. Was it? Yeah. They, it, they put it in the casket. Wow. It's it's play. Yeah. <laughs> they might have been Bluetooth. We put a radio of my, my dad's brothers and sisters put a radio tuned to my grandfather's favorite sports station. So, oh, you know, really? yeah, people do well, it. Well, as an Irish Catholic, I can tell you, chances are he'd still be alive if he'd ever just learned to express himself honestly. <laughs> it's it's not all, life's not all jokes, buddy. Here's a conversation I would have if I was uh, with my family. I'd be like, yeah, that was. That's really funny, uh, mm-hmm. sis. How'd you pull that one off? Well, we just we use your credit card. We rented a debt recorder, <laughs> and what, what, what's that? We rented a debt. You rented a debt recorder. Well, they're one hundred forty nine bucks, but we got ours for nineteen bucks. Yeah, but you rent. I got to go in the hole now, right? <laughs> Someone's going in the hole. You rent. Why would you rent? I don't know. It would be cheaper. <laughs> Yeah, so it's going to go down. Now, does he know he's going to die in a year when they go? I, I, wanna, yeah. I got a funny idea. There weren't a lot of details about it, but it, it, he said he recorded a year earlier. It sounds like it was sort of a, a slow uh, deterioration. Yeah. Mm. Wow. All right. But I just Funny. love that. Yeah. I love well, that the good thing, the good, the best part is that the second you hear it, everyone immediately laughs. I mean, at least nobody had that moment of wait, what's Freak happening? Out. Like they yeah. knew they were they dealing clearly, with. Clearly, yeah, that that, that, that was good. <clears throat> I don't want to have it take a turn for the racial, but if they did that in New Orleans, people would be screaming and running <laughs> out of. The, there'd be a different reaction. That's yeah. all. A little less subdued. Yeah, you're just that's saying. All. I'm just saying. Sorry. You know what? Culturally speaking, you can see different reactions in a lot of places. I can tell you this: in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, at a Southern Baptist funeral, there'd be a lot. There, there'd be no laughing whatsoever. Oh, really? Yeah, it'd just be. How dare anyone you know, oh. take this moment well, and, and try to? Yeah. Who's laughing at a, at something like this? The, uh, I went to uh, Super Dave's wake mm-hmm. you know, several months ago, and Albert Brooks got up there, and his older brother got up there as well and uh and and many others your your larry davids i guess your seinfelds and guys like that i have never i haven't laughed i haven't laughed so hard sure and in my whole life I mean, these are world-class c- comedic I'm minds sure. and they're everyone up there and did their super dave everyone had their stories and mm-hmm. did his voice you know and did the whole did the whole thing i mean it was the place was just on fire for yeah, for ninety course. minutes. Because yeah. what did they all have in common? Soup. They're walking to. <laughs> they're Jews. Super they're Jews. Jews. They're Einsteins. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. They're right. Einsteins. He's, he's Albert Einstein. He's a real yeah. Einstein. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Bob Einstein's a brother. Super Dave's uh, whatever Einstein. Albert Brooks. Yeah. No, but Super oh. Dave is, is Dave? Dave Einstein. I, Bob, I thought right. Bob's the other brother. Bob's the. No, Bob, Bob Einstein, Super Dave. Yeah. Oh, what's the oh, what's the brother runs the uh, ad agency? Then that's uh, God damn it. I don't know. <laughs> that's why Albert Brooks always works in an ad agency. Mm-hmm. I thought he was Charles. Charles. Oh, okay. There you go. Hmm.
Well, here are a couple of that are not a couple of Einsteins. Two employees for Republic Airways, which I believe is part of the American Airlines Corporation, were fired after a video showed them getting into a physical altercation in a jetway. Not two dudes, by the way. 36-year-old William Thomas and 29-year-old Marisha Sporer were taken into custody and charged with assault. And here's a video to show you now. She kind of spits at him and slaps him. He punches her in the stomach, Whoa, punches geez, her wow. in the face. Shit. Well, what? she threw first blood. Brian, yeah. please. So there is some backstory. Not, I not would that we, hope. Not Can you imagine if there was no backstory? First time working a flight together? Yeah, it's like backstage at a Count of Crows or Black Crows. Um, but they're, they were together. They were an item, and she ah. found some things on his phone mm. before takeoff that she mm. didn't like yeah. and confronted him. And <laughs> Reservation just, on competing airlines? It just went downhill from there. According to NBC News, they were involved in a romantic relationship, mm. and um, investigators said Sporg grabbed Thomas by the necktie. You saw slapped him. He punched her in the ribs. Uh, they both were booked in jail, charged with assault and disturbing the peace. And um, I think they've both been released from the airline as well. He did a good combo. He went downstairs <laughs> and then yeah. right upstairs. He opened the hand upstairs. I don't know if he had the fist for downstairs. The hand was open. Just from upstairs. a technical perspective, though. If you watch, you if you watch Tyson fights, you do the same thing. You take that right hand, you go right downstairs with it, and right over the top. Children, yeah. Jesus and, Christ! And she, I'm, I imagine she's probably in shock, but she, she takes it pretty good. She, she did, seemed to be. She, she walked away. Seemed to be okay. Yeah. And I, I got a feeling the that uh, there was a little. There was enough anger to take. Yeah. She could have taken a few more shots and not probably. felt a thing for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I think that relationship's going to go If the that distance. guy knows yeah. that you just referenced Mike Tyson when <laughs> describing the, the shot he threw, he's feeling good. I don't care if he's still in a jail cell. He's like, right on. Yeah. Corolla called me Tyson. Also, he sent, he sent the message out for his next honey bunny, mm. which is, uh, we don't have to scrap, but if you want to throw down. If you want to take a peek at my phone. I'm game. Yeah. That's right. Well, TMZ reports that Jeremy Renner's ex-wife has added claims of drug use and guns to the couple's bitter custody battle over their six-year-old daughter. Uh, Sunny Pacheco, that's her name, she filed new legal documents detailing a cocaine and booze-fueled incident in which Renner talked about killing her. Then he put a gun in his mouth and threatened to kill himself, she says. She also claims the Avengers star once fired a gun into the ceiling of their home while the daughter was sleeping. The former couple have joint custody of their daughter, but they're seeking sole custody uh, with having only monitored visitation rights, and that is when things get ugly. Hmm. I wonder how old she is. I wonder who did his hair in mm. that picture. <laughs> that was a while. Who was thinking about that? <laughs> Something about Mary, the uh, hairstylist. <laughs> yeah. Look did, did his hair. <laughs> That's right. I think he's, uh, I've met him a time or two, I think he's kind of a troubled guy. Mm. I, I don't know how else to describe this. Some guys have demons. Yeah. What you gave know? you that impression? Um, I... I I just got had some I I did uh, Kimmel with him. Uh, God, did I do Kimmel with him, or was there Beyonce or something on Kimmel? My stupid, you always mix those up. Stupid daughter. <laughs> no, there's sometimes I do Kimmel and the other person does Kimmel, and then sometimes I do Kimmel and Beyonce does Kimmel. And my daughter makes me take her to Kimmel, right. and in which case you meet Beyonce and, right. and you're and not working Jeremy. But um, I, I don't know. I just I, maybe it's just a, his acting mm. portrayals or something. There, there seems mm-hmm. to be a, a darkness there. Yeah. I'm not sure what that is. He's attracted to sort of those troubled roles, been the herd locker, and right. uh, not that, that means anything. But you know, actors are attracted to certain roles sometimes. You know, it's weird. I went to school with a Pacheco, who was a good-looking woman with dark hair, mm. who could have been. Son, is it Sonny or Sony? Son, Sonny, S O N N I. Sonny. Hmm. Wonder where she's from. Hmm. I don't know. She's twenty eight. Oh. Twenty eight. Well, did you go to school together? I could. Uh, well, I'm old, so you know, someone could have had her. Oh yeah. Twenty eight or twenty twenty four or twenty seven or whatever. And anyway, sorry. Well, you know, we've been talking a lot with you know the Kevin Hart's and all these stories about people who drive a, maybe a little too much car sometimes. Aha! She's Canadian. Oh. I knew it. Okay. Sorry. We figured it out. Well, Odell Beckham Jr. was not the driver of a luxury BMW at the time. It was involved in a serious accident about two years ago. But the star wide receiver could still be on the hook for damages. So here's what happened. A company called Celebrity Motors has filed a lawsuit against Beckham claiming they let him 
uh, borrow a 2017 BMW 650 XG. I don't know if you're familiar. Uh, that only he was authorized to drive. But mm-hmm. the lawsuit, which was obtained by TMZ, says that Beckham let his friend Blake Anderson drive the $100,000 car. Anderson wrecked it while cruising along in the Lincoln Tunnel in New York in 2017. Anderson is said to have, quote, carelessly cut across several lanes in traffic in an attempt to exit the tunnel, which at one point he struck another car, caused 38000 in damages. But the part that really stuck out to me was Lexington Insurance Company, uh, which is the one representing celebrities. Motors claims Beckham is responsible for the damages since his friend has no experience driving a car with that kind of power. Hmm. And we've been talking about that a lot lately. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, the difference between the, the Kevin Hart situation and that situation is modern day cars have a lot of power, but they also have a lot of like stability stuff and yeah. safety stuff, and the power is much more manageable. The, the Kevin Hart story is a old school car with a ton of New power yeah mm-hmm. it couldn't without all <clears throat> traction control anti-lock everything right. and all that stability stuff so it's kind of a difference the, the reality is is housewives can if you live in beverly hills can routinely drive around in 500 horsepower cars you get the supercharged range rover whatever it'll have 500 or a supercharged jag you right. know all the high end of the luxury stuff that's sort of at the top of the uh, top of the pyramid for luxury, it's routinely 500 horsepower, the Bentley, whatever. So the, Paris Hilton, as I've said, would be driving around in a McLaren, uh, whatever, uh, uh, Mercedes-Benz, Roadster, V12, whatever, with, with 625 horsepower, like with a dog on her lap. It can be done. It's it's done pretty routinely <laughs> now. Oh, yeah. She had an LFA. Oh, it always bothered me. <laughs> That was um, Toyota or, or actually Lexus. Lexus, but same company. But that, that, that's such a great car, and they gave it to her. Ruined it. Ruined it for me. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> well, TMZ is shedding a little more light on Eddie Van Halen's health issues, reporting that he's been flying back and forth for five years from L.A. to Germany for radiation treatments for throat cancer. So he was diagnosed close to 20 years ago with tongue cancer, which resulted in the removal of a third of his tongue. Eddie blamed the cancer. This is uh, this is very interesting. He b- did not blame it on smoking. He blamed it on the metal guitar picks that he put in his mouth when he would switch to finger picking. And he says that that is what led to this cancer. And as previously reported, his well, you want to get to the reasons, bottom yeah. of an oncology question. You ask a rock guitarist <laughs> from from Glendale yeah. or Eagle Rock or wherever they're from. Uh, Whittier. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, they Cabo have Lava. all the answers, all yeah. the greatest, all the greatest uh, teaching hospitals and stuff always sure. have yeah. lead axe men working and explaining what sure. the origin of the cancer oh, yeah. was. Yeah, yeah. You don't talk to physicians. Yeah. Talk well, to musicians. That's good. Mm-hmm. Think about Michael Douglas. Mm-hmm. Hero. Yeah. Heroic cancer. Yeah, I, I, Van Halen's like another one of those just guys that, by all accounts, can't get along and can't. And then there's two of them. You get David Lee Roth in with him, and I don't know. Um, and I don't know. Sammy Hagar seems like a reasonable guy, at least the part of sure. I, I know him fairly well. Like he wants to make money. He's Pretty a savvy businessman. He's a businessman. He wants to. Make well, hay while the sun's shining. In in rock terms, you know, having your shit together, the bar is so low, really, right? To begin with, and those, you know, Van Halen didn't have two crazy people; they had three crazy people. <laughs> oh, I did mean, they? You know, both brothers and Dave, you know, from from legend, uh, all all complete. You know, they all three of those guys would have been their own, could have had their own band and been the the, the key crazy guy. You and so. uh, Michael Anthony need to uh, sit in a. Indian style and commiserate <laughs> for a number of hours because Michael Anthony he's the nicest guy oh, yeah, he's yeah. the nicest yeah. guy in the world support group for normal band members yes, yes. he's so normal yes he's he used a, to do morning show stuff for us all the time he's a car guy he's a super friendly <laughs> humble guy Like, and then you get caught in the shit yeah. show yeah. Like, can you imagine <laughs> Charlie Watts is leading the discussion. Yes. <laughs> he played our year anniversary. He let us come down and, and jump off his dock for a bit. I mean, it doesn't get nicer than that guy. 
I know. And then why? And again, I don't know. It could go no other way. But it, <laughs> yeah. can it Can it go another way? I don't know. We have you, an expert there are, here. There are bands that everybody's like a totally cool dude and great guy. I, I don't know any <laughs> that I like. <laughs> You've heard lore? <laughs> I'm, I'm totally in. Uh, you know, I'm not uh, suggesting that bands can't have, you know, some crazy. I think you do need some. But it's, you know, there's, there's limits even to that. You know, it gets in its own way. But, I mean, to that end, the first time I saw Mr. Crow's Garden, the band I joined, I watched Chris on stage, and I'd known him for two days, and I'd already determined in my head, he's shithouse crazy. There's no way he can be a front man in a band. He's just too nuts. And then he got on stage, and they were terrible. They were just getting started. But there was that thing. I mean, I was like, holy shit, he's got this thing. You know, like, it was obvious. You know, and right. it's like, of course everybody's like, oh, I'll be in a band with that guy. What was the craziest band you observed or encountered or went on a tour with or, or a show or whatever? The craziest other band yeah, that yeah, I saw? Yeah, besides you guys. I mean, um, photo finish. Well, I don't know. I never got enough time around one. to. The, we, I never saw anyone and thought, oh, at least we're not like that. I never had <laughs> like that Like a experience. festival or something? To, uh, yeah, I saw like, some crazy stuff. I, I mean, the, the one of the weirdest things I ever saw, we were in Brazil in 96, and we were watching Smashing Pumpkins from the side of the stage, and their bass player, Darcy, it was it was a giant festival called Hollywood Rock, and Hollywood is a cigarette brand in Brazil. They yeah. sponsored the festival. <laughs> that was news to me. I just thought we're going to play Hollywood Rock, and we get there, and it might as well be called Marlboro Red. You know, right. it was like everywhere. Well, she was pissed off about it. So before their last song, when you're in Brazil, every band is assigned a series of interpreters and bodyguards. Anytime you leave the hotel, you've got a guy with a nine millimeter and an interpreter or two, and they they scare the shit out of you. They did then. You know, like don't ever leave. Don't do you know? And right. Where the hell are we going? You know. But it was all fine. But she asked her interpreter to come on stage, and she asked her to speak into the mic in Portuguese. And she's telling her what to say. And she said, the woman says, "Hey, Darcy wants me to say to you, there's sixty thousand people. Right. Darcy wants you to know that if she had known that Hollywood was a cigarette brand, she wouldn't be here. She doesn't want to work. She wouldn't have come down and performed." Uh, for a cigarette company. Like, that's right. basically what... Right. And, and the crowd's like, oh, okay. <laughs> They're right. just confused. And then Billy Corgan's standing there, and he's looking at an interpreter going, what's she saying? And then his interpreter's <laughs> telling him. And he turns, like, red. I mean, he's so pissed off. Right. And we're all on the side of the stage loving every minute of it. Because uh, when you see another band melting down, you're right. like, oh, thank Sweet God. Sweet shot, you know? Yeah. And they play their song, and she they walk off stage, and he follows her. And he went over there... An airline piloted her or tried to. I mean, he went at her full on. And he's bigger than me. He's like 6'6". He's a big guy. And he turned around. I mean, he grabbed her and he full on tried to throw a punch. And she didn't back down. She attacked him. Wasn't the first wow. time. And we, no, clearly. And and we watched that like, whoa, man. <laughs> Rock and roll. And they, they get separated. And then as he walks by us, we're all going... Oh, you hit a girl. Cool, dude. Way to go. Like, we're just being – like, you know, But it's like, what the fuck's wrong with you? You wow. know? It was – that. there was that. That was definitely a moment where we were all like, okay, all right. It's not. right. We're not the only band that punches each other on the side <laughs> of the stage. Okay. It was cool. this close to slapping the metallic pick out of her mouth. <laughs> and that would have exactly. helped her. That would have been a blessing. Right. I did you a favor. That's right. Maybe he was trying to save her <laughs> <Yeah>. tongue. <laughs> All right, let's bring it home, Gina Grad. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Buzz off. Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad.